and, and that's basically how price action went. Now, if there was no other last major move, what was one support can be resistance. So yes, if I did not draw last, another last major move, this move from A to B as prices climb back up, these levels could again be relevant, but there might be a set of another set of high and low, another last major move that could give me more relevant Fibonacci. So once I've basically gone full circle, I should ask myself, was there another last major move that would be more relevant? And I think there was. BB to C. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. Okay? And you have to stay vigilant about recognizing these last major moves. So I'm going to draw from BB to C. This was a, a what? A sell-off, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go into the Fibble properties. And let's go ahead and paint this one red. You can even make it thicker so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay, there we go. There's our last major move lower. So looking at this last major move lower, the sell-off that we had from BB to C. And let me, let me mention something here, gang. If, if this is not clicking right away, trust me, it takes practice. Anything that's subjective takes practice. But there will be a time that it will click. There absolutely will be a time that it will click. And for those of you that haven't yet, I have a blog over at IBFX.com called Daily Trading Edge. I don't know if you guys have seen it or checked it out. We have a blog called Daily Trading Edge. And at this, at this site, I, I do a lot of the kind of uh, analysis that we do here in the, in the room. Let me just give you that link here real quick. I think that'll get you there. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure. But if not, you can go to the website and, and you can find it. So again, it's, it's, it's uh, Daily Trading Edge, and I do a lot of this kind of research. Um, in fact, I was doing uh, dollar-yen intraday support resistance levels. I'll be posting up the charts for that one later on today if you want to check it out. And uh, We had to talk about market cycles and time frames before that, and of course our schedule for the, for the, live, the limited access webinars like this one are also posted on that site as well. So it's a great way to keep in touch uh, with me in between our, our presentations. Okay, but I digress. So BB to C. Again, BB to C. And you see we broke down all these little moves with these letters so I can draw Fibonacci's from each one of them. Okay, so BB to C was a sell-off. That means two things. As prices retrace, these are going to identify res resistance. Okay, let me draw that one more time. I wanted to get rid of that golden mean. There we go. Okay, so BB to C. So these are going to be resistance from BB to C. Okay? Also, what would nullify this BB to C move? In a sell-off, if I make a lower low than this C point, it nullifies the last major move, and I have to look for another last major move. So again, in a sell-off, if I go lower than this C point, that last major move from BB to C is no longer valid. All right? So keep that in mind. So as we're climbing up, 23.6, was it really res was it respected by price action? Mm, not really. The 38.2, on the way up, a little bit of respect. You know, there's a little bit of a stall here, and, and, and there was a little bit of support. So this level kind of acted a little bit as both support and resistance. Again, as far as the application, you know, why am I even finding these, finding these moves? Think about it. I'm just trying to identify support and resistance. Can I use this to confirm other levels that I might be using for breakouts or breakdowns or trend follows? Absolutely. One of my favorite things to do with Fibonacci is, in the context of a trend, utilize it as an alternative to corrections that I might want to buy in an uptrend or sell in a downtrend. Okay? Again, just remember, this is just an alternative to finding support and resistance. It's another tool in your, in your arsenal. Okay? What level seemed to really get a lot of respect on the way up? The 786. We stopped shy of it three times. Okay? On the way back down, a little bit of respect at 382, but not perfect. But not perfect. Headed back up, headed back down, a little bit of a bounce off the 50. So you can see these levels were kind of on and off 
respected. Now, are there other reasons that price levels, price action might stop at some of these levels? Keep in mind that sometimes Fibonacci levels will overlap, overlap with major and minor psychological levels. Sometimes they'll overlap with pivots. In fact, the, the dollar-yen example that I posted at Daily Trading Edge at IBFX uh, was one such example. So I'll, I'll be posting the images for that later on tonight, and you can check that out. So you'll see that that was an example of the dollar-yen where the pivot point itself and the Fibonacci level lined up really nice within just a handful of pips of one another. And that just gives you more reason to watch that level as potential support or resistance. Okay? So BB to C, it gave me some levels to watch, some levels to focus on. Uh, not too bad. Okay? Is it still the most relevant most current last major move? Well, there's only one way to find out. Only one way to find out. Because we're going back in time, so it's a, it's a little trickier. We're going to go ahead and do C to D. So I'm going to go back, grab my Fibonacci tool, and this time it's a what? It's a rally, right? So just for our visual purposes here, I'm going to make this line green. So it's a last major rally from C to D. In a rally, if I make a higher high than D, okay, in a rally, if I make a higher high than D, is it nullified? Yes, absolutely. Price is sold off, hit the 50%, went below it a little bit, started approaching the 618, okay, rallied up, found a lot of support along the 23.6 for a while. Notice that it doesn't have to necessarily be support or resistance, depending upon which way price are moving up and down through these levels, remember what was one support can be resistance and vice versa. If prices are coming down on these levels, it's support. If it's coming up on these levels, it's resistance. Notice here for a while, prices were supported by the 23.6. And the moment we made this high right here, higher than the D, this level become, became invalid. So what do you do then? Well, there's one of two things. There's one of two things we can do. Well, first of all, I got to get rid of this last major move from C to D. It's no longer valid. I could revert back to BB to C, and I'll probably be at the upper levels of my Fibonacci, and I might even go into extensions. Who knows? I could also consider a fresh new move. Now, this move isn't necessarily, like I said, it's most recent. Is it most significant? Well, it doesn't hurt to draw the lines and levels. It does not hurt. What's going to happen here, though, is this. Because it is such a short last major move, this, this sell-off here, what's going to happen is we're going to get to 100% really fast. Okay, you can see there was, some, there was some support here at 618, some resistance. It was, it was a pretty good level. And this is not to say that DDE is not valid. But what happens is there's a number of valid levels on this chart. Okay? One of my rules is I will not draw Fibonacci from a move that is less than three candles. Three candles is my minimum. So if a move is less than three candles, I won't draw the Fibonacci. This is kind of borderline problematic because while it is very, very, there is some, I mean, look at the respect at the 1.272. Look at the respect now at the 100%. I mean, I'd have to say, even though this is not the most significant, price action really is proving to me that there is excellent support and resistance based upon this small move from D to E. So I'd be a fool to ignore that. And the only way that I would know it's there, even though this is not a ma major move that I was really um, interested in, I still should draw it, especially when my move from C to D became invalid. If that move from C to D was not invalid with this higher high, I probably would not have concerned myself with the move from D to E. But once this high took out my D C to D, it was no longer the last major move. So it, it was in my best interest to consider that possibly D to this E point could be something to watch. And indeed, if you take a look at the way price action is sandwiched between the 100% and the 127.2%, uh, basically between 91.52 and 90, uh, let's see, that's what, 91.52 and 91.59. Yeah, this is a short-term 15-minute chart. But if you take a look at how it's sandwiched in between there, that's actually point, turning into a pretty good set of fibos to watch. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead. Let's see, I think there was another request for the, uh, 
the British pound one one hour chart. So 